Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. The very first thing that I thought of whenever I woke up this morning was big bonks. And upon having this revolutionary thought, I realized exactly what I need to do. I need to use the Great Hammers. There's a total of 14 Great Hammers in Elden Ring, and I'm gonna be showcasing each and every one of them. So just sit back, relax, and get ready for some destruction. For the first of the Great Hammers, here I have the Large Club with Heavy Affinity and Barbaric Roar. And as you can see, this is a weapon that you only need strength to wield. And as you are getting a look at the Light Attack string here, I want to make a quick disclaimer about Great Hammers. You're going to notice that as we go through these, the movesets don't really differ that much. Except there is one Great Hammer that we will get to that almost belongs in an entirely different weapon class. It's pretty weird. But yeah, you got the Light Attack String, which is four hits, and it is basically a wall of attacks. Then you got the Heavy Attack String. You got the Jumping Light. Then the Jumping Heavy. The Running Light. Then the Running Heavy. Then you got the rolling slash crouching attack, which I honestly am a fan of. I know a lot of people do not like 360 attacks, but hey, everybody has different taste. Then of course, Barbaric Roar does give you altered heavy attacks, and they look like this. Now let's just get into the arena and see what we can do. But before we get into this first fight, I'm very thrilled to announce that I am partnering with Apex Gaming PCs to ensure that you have the best hack and slash experience possible. Apex Gaming PCs are made with Nvidia and AMD's latest and greatest parts, and with my new PC line, you will be able to enjoy all of your favorite titles at the highest graphics settings. These PCs are very affordable, you even have the option to finance one if you'd like. On top of that, Apex Gaming PCs is currently having its biggest sale ever. If you use the discount code BFCM at checkout, you will get 25% off of your order. So if you are looking for a new top-of-the-line PC for a really great price, please make sure to check out my pre-builds down below. You guys are the best, and back to the video. Okay, first opponent, who is it? Hello, Vin City. You got dual Gargoyle Twin Blades, I like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna yell in your face, dude. <laughs> hey, good fight, Vin City. Nice build, by the way. And that is the first great hammer down with the large club. Honestly, this is a very, very solid weapon. It is amazing for strength builds. I mean, just the moveset in general allows you to keep on so much pressure. You're gonna get a lot of damage out of your attacks. And you can also get this weapon very early game. If you make your way to the Forlorn Hound Everjail in Southern Limgrave, and then head south, drop down the cliffs, eventually you will find the large club near a Spirit Spring. Moving on to the second Great Hammer. Here I have the Curved Great Club with Fire Affinity and Eruption. For this weapon, you need 24 Strength and 10 Dex. And as I said before, a lot of Great Hammers share the exact same moveset, and the Curved Great Club is no exception exception. And between the Curved Great Club and the Large Club, the Large Club is actually a bit longer than the Curved one. It's really not a huge difference at all though. But then of course I tacked on one of the most beautiful Ashes of War in the game, Eruption. If you land this entire thing, it is very very powerful, you get quite a lot of hyper armor on it, and the magma that gets left on the ground can also do solid chip damage. And I just have a feeling that this recording is going to go by very, very fast. I think Great Hammers could honestly be considered underrated. If you haven't experimented with them, I would definitely give them a try. Orion, hello. Whoa, what? Whoa, oh, okay, okay. Some lag there. Some pretty intense lag. Dear God. I like how I like how Orion's using the Draconic Tree Sentinel build, but also with the Crag Blade, which is seriously a good choice. Good fight. Because I tell you what, man, that Dragon Great Claw is just terrible. But yeah, there you have it. The Curved Great Club, not too different than the Large Club. The range is solid. Damage is solid. Again, the Great Hammer moveset is solid. 
Really no complaints here, and Eruption is by far one of my favorite Ashes of War. If you haven't used it, I would highly recommend it. And this weapon has a 4% chance to drop from the larger second generation Albanarix found across Liurnia of the Lakes. I'd say that the best place to farm for this thing is the Temple Quarter. All you gotta do is head southeast from this side of Grace, and eventually you will come across a few of these guys that you can farm for the club. Get wrecked. Wait, I didn't even change my talismans for that fight. Eh, whatever though. Because these talismans work perfectly for this next great hammer, and it is the Great Mace. I'm going with Heavy Affinity and Braggart's Roar. As you can see, you get S Scaling and Strength on this weapon, and Strength is really the only attribute that you need to go into to wield this weapon. And I gotta say, this weapon has a special place in my heart. It is the first great hammer that I ever really experimented with. The moveset is nothing special, of course, but, you know, that doesn't really matter, because... You're about to see the amount of damage you can do with this weapon. It is absolutely absurd, especially with Braggart's Roar, because you get enhanced heavy attacks that pack the biggest of punches, and they look like this. Whether you do them uncharged or charged, you still get an insane amount of hyper armor. You can basically hyper armor trade with any weapon in the game. Now let's make a deal here. I crush this guy's soul and you click the subscribe. All right, looks like a mage with moon veil. What's new? <laughs> okay. Okay, I literally just removed his soul from his body with one attack. Jesus Christ. And listen, I call this setup good, but it is in borderline cheese territory. Your light attacks do a boatload of damage, your normal heavy attacks do enough damage as it is, but then you tack on Braggart's Roar, and you are legitimately one-shotting people. This is a setup that works in any situation, invasions, free-for-alls, duels, PvE, it's gonna dominate, it literally does not matter. And getting your hands on the Great Mace isn't that tough either, because you don't have to farm for it. There is a camp just outside of the Grand Lift of Dectus that has a bunch of catapults that are gonna shoot at you. Just make your way to that camp, and inside of a chest, you will find the Great Mace. And moving on to yet another insane strength weapon, here I have the Brick Hammer with Heavy Affinity and Lion's Claw. And I figured this was a good time to show off the Power Stance moveset, so I actually have two Brick Hammers. And here is the first look at the Great Hammer Power Stance moveset. It's about what you would expect. You got the Jumping Attack, the Backstep Attack, the Sprinting Attack, and the Rolling Attack. And I actually really do like this Power Stance moveset because the weapons hit nearly simultaneously on every attack, maybe besides the Rolling Attack. And I guess I might as well show off the one-handed Great Hammer moveset, which honestly is good in its own right. Even the heavy attacks I kind of like. But overall, it is just very similar to the two-handed moveset. And I tell you what, man, there is nothing like hitting a nice lion's claw on someone. And a quick little backstory to this setup, I actually had a friend who used to play Elden Ring quite a bit, and whenever we started doing PvP, they just brought out dual brick hammers with a 99 strength, and would just spam the jumping attack over and over again. And it wasn't too bad to go up against, except whenever you got hit, I mean, you just took so much damage. <laughs> hey, good fight, F. Jesus, dude, these weapons are so stupid. <laughs> I am curious, though, how much will a Lion's Claw do on this weapon? It has to be, like, over a thousand, right? Okay, close to a thousand damage. I mean, that's not bad. Hey, good fight. 
And yeah, that is the goofy ass weapon that is the brick hammer. It does hit very, very hard, except that the range does hold it back. In fact, it is in the bottom three shortest to great hammers. But hey, I guess the high damage is a fair trade off. And this weapon is actually found in the wine cellar area of Stormvale Castle. And if you choose to take the back way into the castle and not the main gate, the wine cellar is pretty easy to get to. Once you're on this cliffside here, just head inside, follow these stairs, don't get hit by the firebombs, kill that boy, kill this boy, come here dog. And normally this door right here is locked unless you have the rusty key to access it. But once you get the door open, walk in, take the ladder all the way up. You're going to want to head across the rafters and then jump across to this platform right here and head outside. There will be another exiled soldier right here that you need to kill. As a matter of fact, there is two more. And then on this corpse, you will get the brick hammer. Switching things up, here I have the Battle Hammer with Cold Affinity and Chilling Mist. As you can see with this setup, we are getting 127 Frost to build up a hit. Not bad. And I think you're going to notice immediately that with the Battle Hammer, as well as the next hammer that we're going to see, they are just very, very, very short. There's been plenty of times where I've been using these weapons, and I'm like, oh, I'm about to roll catch this guy so well and then it just doesn't work out that way. And then of course, if you use Chilling Mist, well, you leave Chilling Mist out, and you also get a nice cold buff on your weapon. Now the only question is, whose timbers am I gonna shiver? Hello, Scarlet. What up, Scarlet? Is that supposed to be Scarlet Thought? Kind of a fire name, I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's get it though. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Dude, the hyper armor. Oh my lord. Good fight, Scarlet. And yeah, that's the battle hammer. Solid damage. I love using Chilling Mist on this weapon with Cold Affinity. It's a load of fun. You get insane proc numbers. As I said earlier, really the only drawback is the range. Like the range actually does quite suck on this weapon, but it's not so bad to the point where the weapon feels unusable. You just gotta be a bit more selective whenever you go for roll catches, maybe utilize running attacks for roll catching instead of like crouching attacks and stuff like that. And this weapon has a 4% chance to drop from the hammer wielding duelists outside of the Royal Coliseum in Lindell. Now this next weapon here in my hands is basically the battle hammer, except you'll notice that it has this red tinge to it. That's because it is the rotten battle hammer. I'm going with poison affinity and poisonous mist. We get 118 poison buildup as well as 65 scarlet rot buildup. But yeah, literally the only difference between the rotten battle hammer and the normal battle hammer is the fact that this one can proc rot. And once again, I do wish that FromSoft would maybe spice up some of the Great Hammer's movesets a bit more. Even just a different heavy attack string would be nice. And whoever our opponent is, they are going to contract some nasty diseases from my weapon here. If we manage to get poison and rot off, I will actually be impressed. Because frankly, 65 rot build up a hit is not a lot, folks. All right, Proka. I feel like, I feel like we fought before. Oh yeah, baby. You got those boluses, man? You got those boluses? You got those boluses, Proka? I don't think you do. <laughs> Dude, okay. I know I always say that I feel bad for doing that, but at this point, I really don't. The Rotten Battle Hammer is good. However, most of the time I find rot weapons to be pretty underwhelming just because of the low proc numbers. I think in PvP, there is not a high chance that you get rot off in time, especially if your opponent has boluses. I mean, you can just kiss landing rot goodbye at that point. But hey, with this setup, you got dual status effects that people gotta worry about. If people start eating boluses left and right, 
You can definitely score free hits on people while they're doing that. I think that this weapon does excel more in PvE because whenever you're going up against the bosses, you know, there's just a higher chance that you're going to land rot because it takes more hits to kill bosses than somebody in PvP. And you can instantly get this weapon once you reach the Consecrated Snowfield side of Grace. All you got to do is head northwest from the side of Grace. You will come across a Rotten Duelist that drops the hammer upon defeat 100% guaranteed. Now, remember how I mentioned that there is a weapon that almost doesn't belong in the Great Hammer weapon class? Well, here it is, and it's called the Pickaxe. I'm going with Magic Affinity and Waves of Darkness. As you can see, it does Pierce damage instead of Strike damage. And the reason why I say this belongs in an entirely different weapon class, specifically the Great Axe weapon class, is because, well, it literally has the exact same light attack string as Great Axes. Also, you can't Power Stance this thing with any Great Hammer. However, you can Power Stance it with another great axe so from soft i really really need an explanation as to what you guys were thinking putting this thing in the great hammer weapon class wait now that i'm looking at it literally the entire move set is just the great axe move set this had to have been a mistake and then the heavy attack string is a little bit weird here's what it looks like but then, of course, Waves of Darkness, a very destructive Ash of War. It is a multi-hit shockwave. It also has absolutely absurd hyper armor. I can't believe I actually have access to a pickaxe in Elden Ring. This is truly a Minecraft moment. DSX, what's up? Okay, not bad damage there. Didn't hit any of the other shock waves though. Ow. That hurt. Hey, wait, what's this? Rusting sword. Oh no, oh no. Hey, well, I guess it wouldn't be a monk video without a good old stalemate now, would it? GG, man. And that is the pickaxe in all of its goofy glory. If you went with something other than magic affinity, like heavy affinity, for example, you would get more damage out of this weapon. The main thing that kind of sucks about it is that it only has a 2% chance to drop from the minor enemies. And if you want to go ahead and get this weapon very early, all you got to do is go to the Limgrave Tunnels and just kill miners until you get one. That is definitely going to be taken out of context. Moving on to the eighth great hammer of the day. Here I have the Celebrant Skull with Lightning Affinity and Lightning Slash for my Ash of War. And when it comes to the Celebrant's weapons, I am really not a big fan of any of them. However, I guess the only redeeming quality of these weapons is the fact that you get 20 runes for every successful hit that you land. As for everything else, well, this weapon is just very, very basic. And then, of course, Lightning Strike, you swing your weapon down, and then it is followed up by a Lightning Bolt, and you also get a Lightning Buff on your weapon. Which I gotta admit, it does look pretty badass on the Celebrant Skull. Alright, who is this? Ergovno Ebino. I think that's how you say that. Hello? Oh, I see you have the Ringed Finger on you. And the Anchor. Not a bad choice. Oh, that was close to roll catching. Just not enough tracking. Honestly, that damage isn't bad. With a, uh, whoa, whoa, what? Alright, uh, um, okay. Uh, what is, what is going on? I, I don't know what to do. What is... It's kind of fitting that this fight has been cursed and I'm using this weapon. Um... That was a fight. I can confirm that. I mean, hopefully you guys got a solid idea of how much damage this thing can do. Honestly, with Lightning Affinity, 
it really was not that bad. Still though, I'm not a huge fan of the Celebrant's weapons, and typically the thing I hate most about Celebrant's weapons is having to farm for them. However, the Celebrant's Skull is actually a guaranteed pickup. Once you get to the Windmill Village in Altus Plateau, once you're here, go directly north of the Side of Grace to the Windmill, and you will find a somewhat hidden path that eventually leads to a corpse with the Celebrant's Skull on it. For the second to last non-enchanted Great Hammer of the video, here I have the Great Horn Hammer with Sacred Affinity and Golden Land. This weapon has no unique attacks in its moveset, just like a lot of the other Great Hammers. However, it does have a unique property that gives you 3% of your health back per kill. And yes, this healing effect can stack with the Blasphemous Blade, Rykard's Great Rune, the Serpent God's Curved Sword, and the Taker's Cameo. Sadly, in PvP, and especially duels, that unique property is not really going to come in handy. However, in any mob-dense areas in PvE, it's definitely really good. All right, who am I going to smack with this horn? Who is this? Dark? What's going on? I feel like we always fight. I feel like the connection between me and Dark is always sketchy, always a little bit dodgy. What are you, what are you doing? Do you want to get up and fight? Like, what what is going on? I don't even... Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I... Well, I huh. What is dark? Dude, something's got to change, man. I... I don't even know what to say, uh, except good fight, I guess. Oh, and now the match isn't even ending. Look at this. Elden Ring PvP, everybody. Golden Land is like the all-in-one Asha War. You get an initial hit, you get an explosion, you get projectiles, you get crazy hyper armor, good damage on all parts of the Asha War. It's just amazing. And the Great Horn Hammer is honestly a solid weapon. I do have a little bit of a history with this thing, and I've had nothing but good experiences. And I think I've only run it on faith builds too, and it's just performed very, very well. And sadly, you do have to farm for the Great Horn Hammer. It has a 2% chance to drop from the Ancestral Follower enemies located in Siofra River, directly northeast of the Ancestral Woods side of Grace. You can find two easy to farm Ancestral Followers patrolling below the Singing One. So there's the side of Grace. And right over here is the singing one. And for the final non-enchanted Great Hammer of the day, here I have the Great Stars with Occult Affinity and Stormcaller. And this is actually the only Great Hammer with Innate Bleed. Once again, no unique attacks on this weapon. It's very, very sad, I know. However, this weapon does have a unique property that is sort of similar to the Great Horn Hammer. But instead of restoring your HP for every kill, the Great Stars restores 1% of health for each enemy hit during a swing, and for each hit during a multi hit Ash of War, like Prelate's Charge, Lightning Ram, Wild Strikes, Golden Land, and Stormcaller, which is honestly just one of my favorite Ashes of War. It's so reliable. You can extend it. You can just do one stage. It's really just spectacular, especially with status effects. And yes, dual wielding Great Stars does restore 2% health on power stanced hits. However, you have to make sure that you actually hit both of the weapons. All right, who is this? Terror Blade. Okay, he's busting out the moon already. Kind of wild. Oh no, Terror Blade. Oh no, Terror Blade. Read like a book, that's all I'm gonna say. GG. And yeah, that right there was the potential of the Great Stars. A fight can end in an instant, especially with this setup. Stormcaller is insanely strong. The innate bleed is awesome. All that on top of the innate healing. This is just a spectacular weapon all around, and I would highly recommend it. And you can actually get two great stars in one playthrough. One is on a guarded carriage being towed by two trolls in Altus Plateau. If you go to the Road of Iniquity side path side of Grace and just follow the road southwest, eventually you will come across the carriage. And then as of patch 1.06, there is a red summon sign found in Wrythblood Ruins. 
which is not too far from the first location. But that red summon sign summons Magnus the Beast Claw. Just go ahead and defeat him and you will get the Great Stars. Now for the first enchanted Great Hammer of the video, here is the Envoy's Longhorn with its unique Ash of War Bubble Shower. You get C Scaling in Strength, D in Dex, and B in Faith. And once again, this is a great hammer with no unique attacks from Soft. Seriously, spice up this weapon class a little bit. Like, I love the normal move set, but I, I need something different at some point. Okay, whatever though. Obviously, Bubble Shower, the Ash of War, is the most important part. And here is what it looks like. Isn't that just awesome? And if you want an Ash of War that can just demolish large bosses, this is definitely the weapon for you. However, against smaller targets, it's really not that great. Now, from what I understand though, this Ash of War has a boatload of hyper armor. So maybe we could make it work in duels. I'm not sure though. Sissio, hello Sissio. What's up, man? Got rivers of blood, some cool drip. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of damage. Really good tracking. <laughs> good fight, Sissio. You tried your best, man, but frankly, the bubble shower is just too powerful. The physical damage that you're going to get out of this thing if you go more into faith is not going to be good at all. But honestly, I think this thing is worth using just for the Ash of War. And this weapon has a 4% chance to drop from the large Oracle Envoys located early on in the East Capital Rampart in Lindell. Once you reach this side of Grace, you just head west. And in no time at all, you will pull up on some Envoys. And as you can see... Down there, at that landing, there is one with the large horn. Let's give this guy a taste of his own medicine, shall we? Get destroyed. Up next here I have the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand with its unique Ash of War Surge of Faith. You get B Scaling in Strength, D in Dex, and B in Faith. And yes, the top of this weapon may look like a decapitated fire prelate, and it in fact is. But then the Ash of War Surge of Faith looks like this. And you can kind of just hold it and keep using it over and over until you run out of FP. And I tell you what, man, against the bosses, this thing absolutely melts. However, do not count this weapon out in PvP. It is still a force to be reckoned with. It can be used in invasions, duels, whatever you really want. But all right, who's going to feel this surge of faith? Who is this? Dark Ring. Hello, Dark Ring. What is up? Okay, so he's healing. This is honestly more fun for me because I can just keep using the Ash of War. And there you go. With this weapon, you legitimately don't even need to use attacks because the Ash of War is just that strong. And this weapon is acquired in the Giant Conquering Heroes Grave in the mountaintops. And once you have reached the inside, this weapon is found on a corpse at the end of a large hall that is locked behind a Stone Sword Key door. So if you have Stone Sword Keys, definitely go get this weapon. Next up, here I have the Beast Claw Great Hammer with its unique Ash of War, Regal Beast Claw. You get C scaling in strength, C in dex, and D in faith. And a funny thing about this weapon is that it actually has a true combo with the one-handed moveset. If you go heavy attack into light attack, it can true combo. It will probably do around a thousand damage if I had to guess. Well, I guess that will all depend on what level you're at. And I don't even know if there's another weapon in this game that gets a true combo just from its moveset. But then the Ash of War Regal Beast Claw is absolutely fantastic. It covers a lot of ground. 
I don't even want to speak on the damage. I kind of just want to show it off. And honestly, I think I'm just going to bring this weapon into an invasion. I think the Ash of War will be really good, and that true combo will definitely come in handy. Okay, it looks like we're just in a fight club of some sort, or... Okay, here's an invader. Okay, it looks like it's a 2v2. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Give me that. Look at that damage. Come on, Zarail. Where are you going? <laughs> oh man. I got suppressing fire to help me out. Will that reach? No, it won't. That sucks. <laughs> Hey, good stuff, man. Or woman. GG's. That showcase could not have gone better. We hit the true combo and the Asha War. You guys saw the insane amount of damage you can do with this thing just one-handed. That true combo definitely makes this weapon something else. And I think if you were to go up to like level 150 to 170, I think you would get closer to 1000 damage on the true combo. But since I'm at level 125 and this is more of a quality weapon, getting enough of a stat spread is sort of hard. Regardless, still a fantastic weapon though. And this weapon is actually gifted to you by Garak after you bring him the seventh death root. Normally he is found here in the bestial sanctum, but uh <clears throat> I killed him. And now we are officially on to the final great hammer of the video. And I gotta say, this is one of my favorite weapons in the entire game. From its design to its ash of war, it is just awesome. This is the Devourer's Scepter, and its unique Ash of War, Devourer of Worlds. You get C-Scaling in Strength, Dex, and Faith, which I know is kind of weird. And a fun fact, this is actually the longest Great Hammer in the entire game. And the Ash of War, Devourer of Worlds, looks like this. It is sort of like Gravitas in a way, except you don't pull anybody in after landing it. You will stagger somebody, but basically what this Asha War does is it deals fire damage, and the damage of it scales with the weapon upgrade level and faith. And on top of just dealing damage, this Asha War also steals life from people. And the amount of HP drain that you get scales with the number of enemies hit by the skill. So let's say you land this in a duel, you won't get a ton of life back. But let's say you land this in an invasion, let's say on a host and his two summons, well then you're gonna get more lifesteal. But who is this? Gunter. What's up, Gunter? You look like the devil. Oh man, I am going to get blendered. Or not. Maybe not. I mean, what, one spinning slash from this weapon is all it takes. The dragon halberd is absurd. Nice. Got some HP back. You love to see it. I'm just waiting for the spinning slash. I know it's coming. Or not. Good fight, Gunter. So yeah, as you can see with the current stat spread that I have, the Asha War did not do a ton of damage, but you still get some decent life steal, even if it's just one target that gets caught in it. I think the main two reasons to use this weapon would be its range and also its look. I mean, come on. You got the snake wrapped around it, biting the top of it and all that. Not to mention that this drops from one of the most badass NPCs in the entire game. The original owner of this weapon is Knight Bernal. You first encounter him at Warmaster's Shack, but if you choose not to slay him here, then he will later invade you in Ferrum Azula. And that is officially it for the 14 Great Hammers of Elden Ring. Make sure to comment down below which one is your favorite or your least favorite. For me personally, it is between the Devourer's Scepter and the Great Mace. I just love of both of those weapons with all my heart. Like, subscribe, noti bell, you guys know the deal. Thank you guys so much for all your recent support. Thank you for watching here today, and uh, I'll see you next week.